Bobby Heenan, the missing link. Your man, I know you've got a devil of a time controlling him going against Ivan Putzky. I do not have a devil of a time controlling the missing link. So you, sometimes you don't even get him to the ring. Sometimes he takes the wrong turn. It could happen. It can happen to anybody. Haven't you ever gone up the wrong aisle? Gotten in the wrong car? I did once. Yeah, left out the window the wrong way when he heard the bell ring. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to tell you something about the missing link and Ivan Putzky. Now, the cow palace, I don't particularly like the cow palace here in San Francisco. Why is that? Because I don't like the aroma of animals. That's why. I don't like cows. Well. I don't like livestock. The Pusky should feel right at home. He's going to think he's back home with mom and dad. Well, as much as it's the outdoors sent to you, it's the same to the... Link, now put that down. Okay, stop it now. If you can't control this... I can I'm control gonna... him. Now, let me talk about John Studd and George Wells. Wells is from the Bay Area. He's from Oakland. From Oakland. Wow, what a claim to fame that is. That's a beautiful town, Oakland. Should put the city limit signs on the same post. Well, Studd's got $15,000 for anybody that can slam him. Mr. Wells, you played football, correct? He did. Canadian football, isn't it? Correct. It's like Sandlot. Oh, no, or no. for the 49ers or the Raiders, he could have played for them. They're the same as Sandlot ball. But you want to pick up $15,000, all you got to do is pick up Stud. It's that simple. And then you can take $15,000 and have a whale of a time in Oakland. Oh, well, well, yeah. Well, time. I thank you very much, Bobby Heenan. What a Cal great Palace time in San Francisco on the 17th, and we're going to be right back after this. Thank you. Know, you. Another thing. We had, we had, they was a whole lot of superstars on this stage here tonight. But I want y'all to know one thing: this is my house. And when I say who's a boat attack skills and vocabulary too, all the hits in the disposition is all brand new. You're through. I'm in the planetary and like Doctor Who. So who? Fuck your beef, no relief. I step on stage, girls scream like I'm Keith. What's up, everybody? You have heard from a lot of different people this week about everything that has happened in the world of professional wrestling, but you haven't heard it from Ring Time Pro Wrestling. Keith and Keisha is in the building. Keisha, tell us what's up. If you've never had a Symphony chocolate bar, I would suggest you go get one. There's milk chocolate with toffee pieces and almonds. I know that's not how Keith thought I was going to start the show off today, but... I was thinking about it because I ate one last night. Awesome. I should have just should have bought another one today. Oh, well. Hi, everybody. How you doing tonight? <laughs> it is 1142 in TV land on a Friday night. Keisha, I don't know how you was going to start the show. <laughs> but I don't know if there's a wrong way to start the show right now. I'm having no. fun. We're going to get this thing rocking and rolling. Um, it's been a good week. It's been an interesting week. We got a lot to talk about. So we're going to start this thing backwards and work our way forward. That's right. An incredible Hall of Fame ceremony put on by the WWE down there in Orlando. Absolutely awesome. I mean, it was greatness. I watched all of it. I watched all of it. The speeches were awesome. The 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 crowd was awesome. It was it was greatness. Yeah. So we we are prepared now. Um, we are ready for um, NXT takeover. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, I thought me and Keish were on point with our re- with our preview. Um, and from there we'll roll into we'll probably do some birthdays and news which is uncharacteristic of what we do and then we'll probably hit our break and then we'll come back and do Wrestlemania uh, the Raw Smackdown recaps will be brief and um, then we're going to let y'all go home but uh, yo it's Friday night it's payday Friday you are rich as you going to be so you should be happy. I mean, hey man, if you ain't made it now, you ain't gonna make it. <laughs> so just kick it, love it, and enjoy it. Cause we about to have some fun. Keish. Yes. What did you think of Takeover? Um 
I gave Takeover a definite A, first of all. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Oh, man, like, there were a couple of surprises that I was... Well, I want to say a couple. I'm going to call group it as one big surprise that I was extremely excited about. But I also had a couple of uh, moments where I was like, man. <laughs> so, um, all in all, as a show, all together, it was good. Um, I, was, I was always thoroughly excited. Um, actually, there wasn't just one surprise. It was actually a couple of them that I was uh, thoroughly excited about. But, um, of course, we'll get to that as we go through TakeOver. And I, and then I have questions. Of course, you know, I always have questions, especially when something happens and then I don't understand it, or I just don't, I don't know what's going to go, where it's going to go. But yeah, um, I definitely got a couple of questions. So as we go through, you're going to figure out what's going on in my head and how I feel after takeover is over. So yeah. Oh, also. Doors of the chat room are open. I don't want to answer, but <clears throat> it wasn't too much, though. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, like I said, uh, doors of the chat room are open. So, you know what I mean? You can come fellowship in the chat room, talk your smack, ask live questions to the crew. Um, we are going to work on a way to get y'all, y'all can call in during the live show and holler at us. But, uh, yeah, Keish. Um, it was a very interesting event. Um, I thought the way it went down, it was executed flawlessly. Um, they didn't really add any extra matches. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, wow, five uh, matches. How they go put together a full show? Nah, nah, they just let everybody cook. Right. Just let everybody cook. Exactly. So, um, we're going to go down the line and talk about it. So, let's go. First match. Sanity, who attacked my good friend, my hero. No, wait, Jose. And he could not participate right. in the match. So, of course, we're like, man, ain't no no way, no way Jose. How they going to get down out there? Don't worry, they found a fourth partner. And he happened to be none other than one Cassius Ono. Who, you know, had had just made his return to NXT, and I I think it's kind of funny. Do you know when he left the first time? And it was he left really abruptly, and there was a lot of people because I, you know, it was funny. I had him listed on my people that they need to call up. Yeah, and um, he was he was let go. And a lot of people said he was let go because of his body. Like, they didn't think, WWE didn't think he was putting the work in to really get the two, like, Yeah. Because I think it was, a, it was a segment on, um, that, I mean, not that, but, um, Breaking Ground. When they actually, like, let him go. I think I'm talking to the wrong person. But, I, I'm not mistaken, because I have been watching it. And I think there was a, you know, there were there were times when they had to make tough decisions and you know let people go. And I think that was one of those tough decisions. It was like, hey, you know, we don't think that your body is going to hold up like we want it to. So, and I was just like, man, that got to be rough to be told, like, hey. We think you're just a little too fragile for this. Isn't that awful? That just sounds awful. I mean, I get it from a business standpoint, but jeez. So, I didn't think that he was going to return until he did. That was what got me. Um, Once he actually did make his return, it was a little... uh, it, It came out of left field. That was something that came out of left field for me. So, I don't know, man. We'll yeah. See. Well, here's the thing. Um, if his body being an issue was um, one of the reasons why he 
got let go. Uh, Keish, that man has let go of his body. <laughs> Just say it. He, he let go of his body. He don't give a fuck no more. But yeah, he right about that. Um, he was there, and he wrestled alongside Roger Strong, Ty Dillinger, and Ruby Riot. Um, Keish, I thought Roddy Roderick Strong and Ty Dillinger both put on epic shows. They really did. Um, and don't get me wrong, I thought everybody in the match really worked hard. I thought uh, both ladies did their part well and sold their part in what typically would be a very difficult matchup, right? I always find mixed tags to be difficult to begin with, especially when, you know, the male and female competitors can't really interact with each other, which is good. Right. Very, very good. Because the last thing you need to see is a woman get powered by. I got a feeling that that just doesn't would go over well. No, not it with this crowd. No, no, not, not in these day and times. That's just not gonna happen. No, or I mean, you know, she she swing it or whatever it is. She best around to do turn around and best around and slap her. You know what I mean? It just oh wow, it it yeah. get it get uncomfortable real quick. So, exactly. And then everybody will look at you like, well, you watch her wrestling, but that's a different story. Uh, sanity wins. Um, and they end up pitting Ty Dillinger, which further reaffirms my theory in an NXT match. If Tyler Dillinger is involved, you have to pick the, them to lose. Right. Just don't know why. You just you can't you can't pick up bank on Ty Dillinger winning anything in NXT. It's not how this shit works. Nope, not at all. Yep. So Sandy picked up the win. Uh, Eric Young is looking like the, the fantastic young cult leader that he is uh, supposed to be. Um, I don't know what you do with Sanity, though, as a group. See, I mean, I think er- Eric is a star. Eric's going to the main roster eventually because that's where he's belonged. He has too long of a career. He's done big things in his career. The guy is going to the main roster pretty quick. Yeah. You right about that. Um, Alistair Beck beat it, defeated Andre Sion almost. And there's nothing really to go over about that because, I mean, Dave, you guy, you know he's going to win, right? Right. So, I'll let that one cook. Authors of Pain. Retain their tag team championships. Defeating DIY and a revival. Possibly match of the night. I, Possibly. I, I don't know. Here's the thing. These last three matches really all were good and really set the bar high. This what I think has the most emotion. Most pure raw emotion. It's coming out of this match. I like what they did for each team. Um, mm-hmm. I thought you got to see the tag team precision of the revival. I thought you got to see the passion of DIY, and I thought I got. I thought you got to see the power of the authors of pay. And all right. of it came out. Um, I think you've made authors of pain look. Fantastically amazing and dangerous Because you got to remember it, First it was an elimination match Which I thought was a nice setup For the triple threat Then it was just People all over the place And then they got some order You could tag in it out They did have to with people all over the place again I like chaos theory In my matches right like one thing I don't like with a triple threat match, especially with a tag match with the idea of people tagging in and out. Fuck that, man. Give me everybody in the rig and just start moving this thing around. I mean, I just didn't understand the point. I don't understand the point of it. If it's a triple threat tag match, like, 
you're only going to have two people in the ring. So what was the point? I mean, I don't understand it. The, I understand why you would tag it now because that means there's one whole tag team that's not in the ring at the time. So it, it just didn't make, it don't make sense to me. Like, I just didn't, I, I never understood that. It's like, okay, it's six of them, you know, you got to have, you want to, I, I would want everybody in the ring, yeah. you know, or, because it's, I mean, that's the only way this actually will work and then make some level of sense. That way is uh, one team, like, let's see what tag team gets knocked out the ring, you know, the other two go at it, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It, it adds a better element because you always will have one or both members of each of the three tag teams in the ring as opposed to just two people and one getting completely left out of the equation. It's kind of boring, actually, when you tag him and out like that. It doesn't make, I don't think it makes for a good match. Like, it just, it doesn't make any kind of sense anyway. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just more exciting to see everybody in the ring anyway. Yeah. Um, I I get the tagging element to a point because of how people can move things around or whatever, and it does provide a weird psychology element where you could have to, you know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. make, make things work. But um, uh, yeah, give me give me six people just going at it crazy. Yeah, <laughs> right. I like it. The ref lost control. Shit went left. Um, DIY and Revival had a short-lived partnership. Where they was like, yo, man, we can work together to take out these big-ass monsters. Um, But give credit to authors of paid for fighting through it. Every time I thought they was done, they kept coming back. And they ended up eliminating DIY first. And then they took out the revival. Hell of a matches. Um, the crowd was a hell of into both of them. All, right. They, and they didn't like authors of pain. Like they booed the shit out of them. But <laughs> right. Because they beat their guys. That's fair heat. They got heat for beating their guys. Okay. When DIY went out, people was disappointed as shit. Because that was their favorite. But their second yeah. best favorite is the revival, because of they they fights with DIY, and just because they've been around so fucking long. So, Authors of Pay really had a good show, and I thought it really attrished them as a tag team champions. Uh, and those guys are huge. Good yeah, God, kids, they're huge. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you right now, if they debut on the main roster with Paul Ellering. And give him one last big run, it'll be cool as shit. Cause they just all they gotta do is debut and just crush whoever the champs are. The first thing people go to see on national TV is like, oh my god, who are those guys that are like blocking out the sun? But yeah, that happened. Um Asuka is still NXT champ and still undefeated. Uh yeah, that hurt beat, my heart, man. She beat Ember Moon. Um and that was the first time we got something wrong the whole night. Yeah, I know. That hurt my heart, man. I was like, come on, Amber. That was supposed to be you. But then, watching the match in its entirety, um, after watching Oscar push the rest into the ropes, I was like, wait, so we doing stuff like that now? But, um, I mean, by any means necessary... He ain't just qualified or nothing, so you know, um, it still kept her in the match and everything. I just was kind of, I was real heartbroken. Though. I thought that was Amber Moon's moment, man. I was like, yeah, she gonna win this title from Oscar, and you know, she gonna end this undefeated streak, and she gonna be the new NXT Women's Champion. And nope, that didn't happen. That didn't happen at all. Sucks, but. I mean, 
at some point, Oscar, that's, and that's question number one right there, is how are they going to be, how are they going to move Oscar to the main roster if she'll never drop the belt? Right. Well, that'll be part of your chart. What'll happen is they'll move her over and she'll be NXT champ. That should be NXT champ on the TV, on the main roster TV show, until she delivers the belt to NXT, and they have a tournament for the number one contender since she's no longer NXT. And then you just have her re- retire NXT on top. Yeah. Or, uh, the young Moon gets her second shot. Beats uh, her for it, and then... yeah. She moves on to the main because I think that mm. personal opinion, I think that she drops the belt to yeah. anybody in NXT. Like that's going to be it for her. Right. Like she might have one rematch, and that's it. Like she's not staying in NXT. Like that's it for her after that. They're going to move her up to the main roster immediately. Like it's mm. never. It's not going to be those drawn out for three or four rematches or anything right. she's going to drop that belt and then that's going to be I, that's the next week you're going to see her on your Raw Smackdown live like that's it so um, that, that'll be if she drops the belt now if she doesn't then you know she's just going to randomly one day just appear on one of the shows and then that'll be the end of that because that's how uh, Sasha was I mean she wasn't undefeated or anything but when she debuted on the main roster she was NXT champion so you know you have the match you drop the belt and then you still go you still continue you on to be in the main roster it's just that now you're just kind of Tying up loose ends with NXT, and Oscar can end up doing the exact. She could end up doing both. She could end up debuting on the main roster and still dropping the belt to somebody, you know, uh, on the NXT roster. But I don't. They wouldn't. I don't think they would do that. You know, it's going to either. It's going to be one or the other. Either she's going to go undefeated or she's not. Yeah, I I think they they'll do something to that extent. I think the the mystery will be is that she came into NXT and she ain't nobody been able to beat her. She's dominated everything, and now she's coming to Raw, more likely Raw, with this idea. Yes. Um, her coming to Raw, I think, would probably be the best fit because I think the females there are, are talented. At the top heavy, but uh, uh, they don't really have anything after like four, the four, the four major women on that roster. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's an easy sale. It's very easy. At least the first few weeks are very easy with her. Uh, but you know, we'll see. Ultimately, I would hope to see her at Raw. Um, next match. Made of it. Final countdown. What Bobby Roode uh, took on should say Nakamura. Nakamura is two time is the NXT champion. Uh, That's right. Okay. But what exactly is that? Match was awesome. Uh, uh I didn't like Shit Say's entrance as much as he usually do. Um, definitely felt Bobby Roode. You know, you, you got to get the gloriousness. And of course, you know, Bobby got to come in in a glorious way. Uh, are you right? I didn't really. I wasn't, I wasn't as excited about Shit Say's as I normally am, but um, I still think they both. Interests were pretty decent, you know. I think I still enjoy both of them as as much. But uh, well, I take that back. I think that Bobby's. 
I think both of them, both of their interests were a little drawn back from what we've previously seen. So, uh, it wasn't as grand, but, you know, it was, it was still good. The match was awesome, so I guess that made up for the interest, huh? Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Uh, Bobby Roode is about to owe NXT for probably the next year. I mean, he's already been champ, but I'm literally he's about to owe NXT for about the next year. Um, yeah, you right about that. He defeated uh, Shinsei. And I thought it was cool because, you know, you know the sister Nakamura's going on to bigger things. Uh, but other than that, uh, great match. Uh, sold a lot. Uh, you was worried about Nakamura legitimately. I think everybody had, was able to put the investment in, and it, it worked out. And it was just one of those like, "Oh, right. made another simple mistake." But uh, you know, uh, now, <clears throat> now let's talk about uh, a couple of the because I know. Well, we both know that during NXT take over they usually have shots of the different stars that are sitting in the audience of course there was a shot of Beth Phoenix and, and Edge and you know it was uh, it was a good night and then Drew McIntyre's face shows up sitting like front row like Keith what the hell Drew McIntyre like well here's the thing they knew they'd break the internet if he was there. Recently released by Impact Wrestling, who read their release around the same time they read the Hardy's release. Mm-hmm. Talk about hustling backwards. And we'll talk about that more later. But really, talk about hustling backwards. But anyway, mm-hmm. if he wanted to stay over there. They couldn't get a deal done. And what I mean by they, pretty much the TNA brass. It was my understanding that a lot of talent was upset when they got released, but was more upset that it was to try to work it out with them, and then TNA either didn't put up the right offer or it didn't come till too late. So. Either or. Right. Um, but it. I don't know, but <laughs> Let's talk birthdays. Birthdays are always fun, right? Birthdays. Well, yesterday was April 7th. Uh, do you know Draws has celebrated a birthday? Draws turned. Uh, 47 I'm looking at right now uh, yeah 40 actually 48 um, Sanjay Dutt yesterday celebrated a birthday Sanjay turned 35 and uh, the biggest birthday for yesterday would have been one Mr. Uh, Jennifer Hudson y'all know him as David Otunga uh, Smackdown live uh, broadcaster he turned 37. Um, 37? Yeah. Old Tucker 37. I didn't know he was that old. Man. Wow, because you should think he's older than dirt. No, no. Not that. I wouldn't say it like that. That's just awful. Oh, my God, Keith. Don't do that. Don't be trying to put words in my mouth. I'm just asking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mm-mm. Nah, I didn't say Age of 37. No. He ate no. his baby. I didn't know that he was thirty seven. Like that's that's news to me, but you know. It is I mean, to tell the truth, most of the superstars I think are either older or younger than what they are. Either they're like ten years older than what I thought they were or they're like five years younger than what I expected them to be, so you know, there is no in between for me. Like I don't I just I need to learn the ages of everybody. Because, you know, I think what it is, is for me is that 
some of the wrestlers that come into WWE, I, I forget, have been wrestling with other promotions for like years. So like I I think I'm always thinking from a okay they started out first standpoint, you know, as opposed to oh well this person was with TNA for like ten years or they was with like ROH for like you know ten years or something like that. So well, you fair. really don't. Oh, Tucker did. I love New York. He didn't really do anything else. Um, just okay. We ain't talking there. about. We're not talking about that fool. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're gonna talk about this. Then you have to throw me as into that, and it's like no. So I'm not even gonna get into that. Never forget. No, you how can you forget that? Seriously, I mean for real, for real. It's funny because I really judge him for that. Like yeah, I'd be yeah. like, <laughs> do you do do you realize that he is in the six degrees of separation of kiss of flavor Flav? Oh, that's disgusting. He kissed a broad <laughs> who is famous mm-hmm. for Kiss of Flavor Flav. That is just nasty. Like, also, seriously. I want you to understand, he brought Jennifer Hudson, the famous Oscar winner, Grammy winner Jennifer Hudson, into that chain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody, uh, uh, yeah. So, Flavor Flav has kissed Jennifer Hudson by proxy. They're still engaged, them two. Yeah. Jennifer and uh, David. I mean, They've been engaged for like six years. I mean, like, I, nah. Yeah. 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 Because the last time I think I read anything about them, it was Jennifer talking about how she don't feel pressured to get married. And I'm like, girl... It's, I mean, I'm not going to put a timeline on nobody else's relationship. That ain't, that's not right. I wouldn't do that. But personally, I can't be engaged for like six years. Like, I just, that's just too long. Like, you know, it's, that's way too long. You know why she don't feel pressure, Keys? She got all the money. Yeah, I know it. It's funny because um, <laughs> I talk... <laughs> I'm going to talk about it now. So, uh, there was a point in on SmackDown Live where JBL, he, David said something to JBL. JBL was like, about his, uh, he said something about his fiance. JBL was like, yeah, she bought her own ring. <laughs> yes. What? No, because he was talking about the, the Cena thing and then... Yeah. yeah, there was a thing in the segment, and then it was like he was like, "Yeah, I mean, that's because your, your your wife bought her bought her ring." I said, "Damn, <laughs> it's fucked up." Ooh, oh, he had to do it like that, though. Yo, I was like, "Oh shit, maybe, maybe JBO did run borrow off." Yeah, you know it. Hey, I bet he did. Shit, it sound like. See, it's it's crazy because. Um, listening to JBL, like, it's funny, outside of the announce table, like, you could be friends with JBL, but when you sitting at the table with him, he make you want you, he will make you want to rip his head off, like, some of the things he says is just outright, just ruthless, it's like, dude, seriously? Like, he went there, and I was like, damn, he had to do all that, though, <laughs> Like, he had to be like that tonight, you know. But I, I was laughing at the same time. I was like, dang, that got to hurt. He had to be like that. So it was ridiculous. Oh, cause they, yeah, because they was talking about the, uh It was a Miz and uh, Maurice out there pretending yeah. to be Cena and Nikki again. And, yeah. Oh, my hey, God, they get on my nerves. You, you give it up the later part of the show. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> Just just let you know. You know. Just just let you know. Gotta give it up the later part of the yeah, show. I know, I know, I know. I went a little left. But still, like I just I had to put that out there. Okay, all right, all right. So um are we in the news now? Are we done with yeah, uh, well, well, I, that, that's we, pretty much it. I mean, because uh, April 10th is the next set of birthdays, and I, I ain't going at all that. Uh, 
So, do you hear that the Big Show was report? Oh, that's shit. Kind of don't even know about going into too much because, uh, you know, uh, let, 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 let's let take care of some things that don't give out spoilers. Well, here's the thing. Y'all don't watch WrestleMania by now. Look, Big Show might be a little bit pissed about how that Andre the Board or Battle Royal went down. And basically, the broad kind of got played early as fuck. Not that they didn't win it or how the storyline finishes out, but just they got played early as fuck, right? But after reading what his uh, possibly, what he was possibly pissed at, you know, I can understand it. Um, cause you, cause he wasn't mad at not winning and uh, cause we all, anybody that knows the big show knows that he is fully willing and able to put someone over. So he, he wasn't really cared about all that. He was just pissed off because, you know, he felt like, all right, we had this, me and him and Ron had this moment going, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it just got snatched away, and it was then the next thing you know they both getting eliminated. So like, it was a time where he was just like, this was our moment to, you know, to have, and we didn't get to have it. It was just kind of ripped from under us. And you know, that was the reason why he was pissed. I'm like, well, I mean, when you put it like that, you know, how can you argue with it? Really, I mean, yeah. Because if that was me, I'd be pissed about it too. Like, damn, I had this moment going, and it was just stolen and then destroyed. Like it was over. Like it wasn't even like they could. They came back to it. Like they, they were. It was just done. So, I get it. I get it. Definitely get it. Um. Other than that, uh, let's go down the line. I mean, I saw some. It said Kurt Angle and Big Show side with APA. I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, because of my head, right. I was thinking Acolyte Protection Agency. <laughs> right. But Not apparently, now. it's uh, a talent agency. It's called an agency for uh, performing arts or something like that. And they pretty much help guys get movie roles and stuff like that and get involved in other things. So, good for both of them. They both thinking about their post-WWE, uh, uh, just post-wrestling careers and what's next and how to make sure that they take care of, man. Because, whew, you don't want to be looking for money like that. Uh, no, no, you definitely don't. That's the wrong way to look for it, actually. Ugh. Mm-mm. <laughs> mm. Like, no. So, um, I, oh, I got a piece of news. So, apparently, um, Zach Ryder had, uh, shared a pic, well, yeah, he, uh, <clears throat> then revealed his new girlfriend to the world. Now, I didn't know that him and Emma had broke up. So, of course, I'm, I guess I might be a little late in the game, but you know. Uh, yeah, he revealed his new girlfriend to the world. So I'm guessing, you know, Zach Ryder looks like he's doing all right right now. I know that was pretty minor news, but hey, I thought I'd present it anyway. No, no, it was worth presenting. Uh, yeah. So... You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I didn't know him and Emma broke up too. But yeah, so is this girl I'm famous? Is aware. she a WWE superstar or? No, she is actually. Um, I think she's a she's a. I think she used to wrestle in NXT, and now she is with Impact Wrestling. I believe she's a knockout. Either she's a knockout, or she's a former knockout. Hold on, let me pull it up again. Um, let me see. Where is it? Where is it? Um, cause she, uh, I think at one point she was with NXT, she got released or something like that. It was, it's something along those lines, but I know she doesn't wrestle in, uh, WWE anymore. 
So, um, and I think right, at this point now, she's a knockout. I forgot her name, too. Yeah, I know. I'm doing bad. But uh, I do remember that much. So, as we're going to, I let us go on ahead and continue while I find this. I can't. I don't have my glasses on, so it's hard for me to see stuff I need to put my glasses on. Y'all excuse me. I have moments like this all the time. <laughs> like, this is normal for me. I have a bad habit of taking off my glasses and then um, be trying to look at stuff and, like, where is I? All right. So... But I thought that was pretty interesting. Because I know I didn't see him at the Hall of Fame. So, either I, I, I didn't know I didn't see him at the Hall of Fame. And, and then, uh, of course, we wouldn't get into some other stuff later. But when I seen that, I was like, wait, what? Like, when that happened? When they break up? I thought it was a cute couple too, but you know it was all it was all over the place and taking pictures of Disney World. You know it's big when you take taking pictures of Disney World. So yeah, um, so the WWE uh, UK Championship Weekly Show will be launching soon on the WWE Network. That's awesome. Yeah, man. So. Um, they are scheduled to return to Norwich, England for the first uh, time ever to present uh, UK Championship Live, Epic Studios, uh, Saturday, May 6th, and Sunday, May 7th. And I think from that point on, they're going to try to figure out a way to get you some, some weekly television programming out of there. Um, they're going around touring. They had about four guys show up at 205 Live this week. Uh Man, Keish, if they get another show, that's another thing we got to watch. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. So, um, he's dating former Tough Enough contestant and current Impact Suits wrestling star uh, Chelsea Green. He wished her a happy birthday on Instagram, and that's how they, you know, put them at the news that they were together. Um. So yeah, it was that. It was literally seriously that simple. I knew I seen her face somewhere, but yeah, I know that was really random and backwards. But I, I had to look it up. Mm. Um. Oh, I had I had something else in the news too. Um. Oh. Okay. So. Oh, Keith, man. Yeah. Uh. The the women's tournament, the women's tournament. That's how I think. Yeah, uh, thirty two women will be set up for a big uh, tournament to determine. Uh, I think we're going to go number one consider and champion. It's going to be. Um, they're they're coming from fifteen countries. I want to say. Um, it's going to be this summer. So it's going to kind of mimic the uh, Cruiserweight Classic, but it's going to be a little different because, of course, uh, it's not like... I mean, we don't really necessarily need a women's champion because we have three of them. But um, it's going to... Of course, we're going to have B4 prizes and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be very uh, exciting. So, of course, I'm going to be watching because, you know, it's women. <laughs> like, right. Come on, man. So, um, but it's it's definitely going to be a milestone. Um, the women's champions, uh, um, Raw women's champion Bailey, SmackDown women's champion Alexa Bliss, and um, the NXT women's champion Oscar were the three that were up, on a panel um, with uh, Stephanie and Triple H to announce it. So it's definitely going to be. Um, an exciting moment in, in women's in the women's division in its entirety. Um, I'm definitely gonna um, I'm definitely gonna watch and see how this happens. Um, but 
I, I definitely had to be the one. Of course, I had to be the one to bring that up. Because that was the very first, one of the very first things I was thinking about, too. When, um, when uh, we, was, we started talking about the news. So, it is definitely something to discuss. But, um, I know that's not it, Keith, and that can't be it. Um, it may be. I mean, here's the thing. What a lot going on in the, in, the, in the notes and news region, right? So, right. Uh, with that being said, first break, probably only break of the show. Wait, we'll, wait, wait. It's one more thing. It's one more okay. thing. So, of course, me. I think I'm, man, I'm news heavy today. So, Simon Gouch has been released from WWE. Man. If you don't know who Simon Gouch is, Simon Gouch is one half of the Vaude Villains. Um, pretty much that was all that was listed on the website is that, you know, he's been... WWE has come to terms on a mutually agreed upon release with him as of today, which this was actually the fifth. Um, of course, they wished him well in his future endeavors. Uh, that's all that was pretty much said. So, my question is, what is going to happen in the Aiden English? And, like, how are this going to play out? Because, of course, the Vida Villains were really seen on the actual show too much. So, I'm trying to figure out what are they going to do with him after this uh, new development. This is going to be really interesting. I'm, I'm just saying. But I had to go ahead and let everybody know. I had to put yeah. that out there. So, they're working, you know. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, we're going to go ahead, uh, do a little bit of a break, and we'll be back. And uh, from that point on, we will uh, talk about WrestleMania. Oh, WrestleMania. And we'll be back. Back for these messages. We'll be right back. <laughs> Go ahead, pop off, me and my click put on. I'm like a young McMahon, I'm here to get your bitch off. Woo! Like I'm Rick Flair, little finger to the big balls. Man, aka police, guess I'm over your head like guitars. Kill these niggas, that's no problem. Chill, these niggas want no problem. That chopper body like horn swaggle, can't see you shot them like Sin Car. Roll it up with that shit loud. It ain't mine if that shit not. Ladies hate when I rip through, but they in love with this Jake Ride. It's like now, say hello to my Python. I'm seeing punk with that mic, y'all. She go to sleep as my pipe bomb. Women, bless that be hurting feelings. Niggas is Curtis Axe, so my rap is like Kurt and then. And then, don't it? I'm such a charmer. Come crown it. Not talking whip, I'm thinking Lawler. Cause I'm royalty, but we talking cars, it's not a problem. Just bought two big bodies, call them Kamala and Umaga. Why the? You're talking to the black guy. My gang grill, but I ain't never been no vampire. Look at all that ice he got on. Bigger than that icy title. Picking up my pill, man, cause I still feel like I'm flying Brian. Who high as I am? Who fly as I am? Life is a bitch, but you this bitch is more than likely China. Get it? Strong ass hoe. They can say they want that smoke. Well, I'm Papa Shango. Cause I be hopper, playing low. Get the ganja, no steamboat. And I fly as a crossbody, but I'm tired of saying so. So I do so with new producers and a slew of my latest verses. And a ruthless like Rusev move or be through with you niggas first. Get back to work. Talking to the bad guy, yeah, Chico. You're talking to the, yeah, Chico. You're talking to the bad guy. I'm too sweet. I dare you niggas act fly, yeah, Chico. You're talking to the bad guy, yeah, Chico. Yeah, Chico. You're talking to the bad guy. Too picking your eye. I'm that guy. Hey y'all. Yeah. Something happened to me. Something happened to you. Okay. Hey y'all, don't look like no Daniel B where they seeing me as a goat. But hey y'all, something happened to me, something happened to you, okay? Hey y'all, you 
counting your little bees, my nigga, my cheese mo. Can I bother you with this rhyming? Man, I five at niggas with rhyming. Heard they talking right from the sideline, like a part of me been declining. Nigga, argue often with liars. Beside that, I got no choice. Rather be he slayed it before I make it a doink. My point, I'd rather job than have my morals expired. Niggas getting back, they broth is. I ain't told in a while. Yo, everybody, we are back. Um, ready to talk about WrestleMania. Favorite show of the year. Can you show me if you complete the pre-show matches into this? Um, I'm going to say this. I understand WrestleMania is the biggest event of the year. I understand that you want to try to give as many talents as possible ta- time and a good slot to showcase. Right. Mm-hmm. Keish. I don't do that. Um. Six hours total. Six hours plus. If you came in at the pre-show at six o'clock, right? You had a two-hour pre-show. You watched three matches. Five. It was se- It was seven o'clock. Keish. Yeah. Who they play with? Seven? <laughs> like, okay. So, personal opinion, it was agonizing to watch that much wrestling. Like, it wasn't, it's not that it was bad. Don't get me wrong. But, it was two hours of pre-show and five hours of the actual show. It was long as shit. Like, <sighs> cramming all of that into seven hours was just nerve wracking. You know? Like, I was like, dude, I'm not gonna lie. If I was there at the actual show, I probably would have wanted to leave like halfway through all of that. Like, I would have gotten, like, uh, three and a half hours in and been like, look, we're leaving in, like, half an hour. Like, I just can't. I can't. As much as I love wrestling, because I do. Lord knows I do. Seven hours at a show is long as shit. I'm just saying. And I'm pretty sure, well, let me put it like this, because it's longer than that. Now, of course, during the kickoff, people are still getting in their seats and coming in and, you know, all of that. And I get it. I get it. Not everybody's there yet. But at the same time, it was two hours. Two hours of the kickoff show. Two. Now, as a person that watched all of this, I was exhausted at the end of WrestleMania. Man, exhausted. look. When I looked up and it was after 11, and Undertaker and Reigns had you made it to the ring, and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. That's what got me. Because I kept checking the time, too. And I was like, I thought they cut matches. Like, I said, man, you know. Like, are we not. Is that not are they not going to show. Because, of course, I knew they were going to show. Undertaker and Reigns like that was given and of course they were going to have the championship well uh, a, a couple of the championship matches now um, there was some scares in there for me but that was because it was after 11 o'clock and I think they still had like what three matches to do yeah so yeah, yeah they still had three whole matches to do so it was like okay how the hell are you gonna fit three whole matches into this next into this next hour? Like the way that it was scheduled, it said the show was gonna be over at eleven. That was four hours of wrestling. And you still had it. It was nowhere near over. So it was like I was just sitting there, like, dude. And you move three, and there was three matches during the kickoff show. So you even tell me, even with three matches on the kickoff show, 
that you couldn't fit all of that into four hours? I was just like, you know what? I'm not even arguing with it. It is what it is, but I was exhausted. That show was over. I didn't want to do nothing else. I wanted to go to sleep. I was like, yeah, I'm done for the night. Because <laughs> yeah, that man. was long. It was long. So, but, and, 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 I was really a little thrown by uh, a couple of the matches that were on the kickoff show, but at the same time, I guess after watching the uh, show, after actually watching uh, the main show, I understood it. You know what I'm saying? I got yeah. it, but then I was like, eh. So, because we, we both know there's there that every single match that was on the main show was something that wasn't going to get cut. Like, there was something that they weren't going to show on the kickoff show. That, that just wasn't going to happen. So, I understood it. I got it. Like, wholeheartedly. But, I guess we have to get into it. Now, we're going to go through the kickoff, correct? Yeah, I'm just going to do the matches. To. I'm doing the matches as they are in order. I didn't really separate okay. them as one or the other. So, right. yeah, I'm just kind of going down. Match by match by match. Um. So, NXT Champ Devil uh, retains his uh, cruiserweight title. Let's say NXT Champ Cruiserweight Champion Devil retains his title by defeating what Austin Aries. I was hurt by that. Yeah, I kind of thought Austin Aries was gonna take it, man. I really was hurt by that. Yeah. Um, Mojo Raleigh wins the Andre Memorial Battle Royal. Uh, so all pun intended. Off Harry Favors Big Show and Braun Strowman did get thrown out very early. Yeah. Uh, after were. that, hit. We could just threw everybody out. That was some bullshit. And exactly. And then I, I realized, okay, what this might not be the best use of the SmackDown tag team division since they use those guys to fill out the match. Exactly. Also, uh, hey man, it was nobody to get invested in for, after a while because it was like, yeah, all these dudes up. But uh, the guy who ended up winning was Mojo, and uh, he had some help from what Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Damn patriot! <coughs> so, yeah, I wasn't too happy about that moment. I was like, "Ugh, get him out of the ring!" Like, like, are you serious? I was really, I actually was kind of upset about that entire day. Like, I was like, are you serious? Come on, man, for real? Yeah, man. Uh, but, but you know, they needed some celebrity involvement. I think they wanted to try to, you know, do that thing. Hey, he was strategically placed there. He had on uh, the Mojo shirt. Then Jinder had right. to come out there and poke, poke at him. Uh, hey man. I ain't poking at no beer for nobody. Nope. <laughs> not at all. So, uh, it is what it is. But, <laughs> yeah, no. Um... But I actually was excited for Mojo. I was excited about it. I, I mean, after I mean, what what else can you do? do yeah, here's the after, thing. Oh, uh, they threw everybody out. I think um, this is a good opportunity for him to probably get somewhere out of this, right? Like this is hey, if they want to launch his career. Here you go. Right. They haven't really done it with anybody, but hey, hey, hey here you go. Uh, yeah. Uh Dean Ambrose, I Intercontinental Champion, defeated Baron Corbin to uh retain his IC title. Keish. Uh why would you let the young buck launch off? Well, I mean, I 
I mean, I know he, he watches somebody else, but like, still, still. Just saying. He, you know, <clears throat> I don't think this, I think this was the time for Baron Corbin to win the title. Like, it was WrestleMania, man. Like, this could have been huge for him. Because, it's not like the Ambrose ain't never had this moment. So it's right. kind of like, dude, you know? But at the same time, and, and this is the question that I had, they couldn't fit this during the uh, main show? Hell, he did everything else in the main show. <laughs> so I don't know. I guess I was kind of mad about that. But then again, I was, always, I was also upset that they didn't have a SmackDown Tag Team Championship match either. So... You know, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was a good, good match, nonetheless, but at the same time, I just really wanted, I wanted two things. I wanted it to be during the main show, and I definitely wanted, I actually wanted Van Corbin to win, you know. Um, as I've always, as I've said before, and I'll say it again, I could see Van Corbin going places. Like, he's going to be more than just a mid-carter. And I'm, I have a good, great feeling it might not be in a recent future. Um, it, hell, it might not even be this year, but at the same time, Baron Corbin's going to be a main eventer one day. And then, of course, people will hear me saying that and think I might be stretching a little bit, but I'm really not. Like, in my own personal opinion, that man is going to go, that man's going to have champion, I mean, WWE championship goal one, one day on. So, regardless if it's the Universal title or if it's the WWE title itself, he, he's going to hold it around his waist one day. But, um, this could have been a beginning for him. It could have been a great beginning for him. I mean, it already was an awesomeness. Uh, it was already an awesome sauce when he already won the, he won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal as an NXT superstar. So, to me, it was, uh, that was already the start, you know. But um, I think I, he's going. To, he's going big places. So <clears throat> we know that's not it for him. But I give both men big thumbs up for a great match because it was the match was still awesome, yeah. regardless. Yeah, I'll, I'll give credit. I just, I just think the wrong guy won. Um, yeah, but we'll get to that a little later. Um, AJ Styles defeated Shane McMahon. Uh, Keish. I mean, the first half of the show was better, probably all in all, than the, the second yeah, half. But this one, I thought, right out the rip, like the first match on the main show, it's like, oh hell. Um, right. and Keish, I only want Shane McMahon from this point going forward to work with other smaller people. I know, right? Fuck that wrestling giant. No, uh, uh-uh. you yeah. only wrestle little dudes like you, because you right. know, be able to do more throws and stuff like that. Like it just it worked out so much better. It did. Oh, he was out of all the matches I've ever seen him in. That was one of his best. That was one of his best. Like, oh, he was incredible. It was awesome. And I asked, there was actual opposition for this match to be first. But I was like, trust me. Like, I'm sitting here, um, I was telling Lance, like, trust me. It, it need, it's worth being first. You know? It's definitely worth being first. You just have to watch. Because if you've ever seen a Shane McMahon match in general, if you've ever seen an AJ Styles match in general, then you know that there's, there's going to be some gold in this. It was incredible. I, Keith, I felt it when Shane missed that uh, 450 splash. Like, I was like, come on, man. He jumped off the top rope. <laughs> I was so like, oh, my God, he jumped off the I was, I was screaming, like... I was like, no, come on. Like, I said, they could have let him hit that. But 
all in all, you know, there were moments during that match where I kind of like stopped breathing for a second. I was like, dude, dude. But yeah, you're right. Shane needs to always work with dudes his size. Like, 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 I understand the David and Goliath, you know, aspect of matches that he's done in the past. But he can stop all that now. He, he's good. Like, if you're going to definitely, if you're going to work a match, definitely do it with somebody that's, that's in line your size. Because that was awesome. That was awesome. That was a incredible start to WrestleMania. And you're right. The first half of WrestleMania was definitely better. But we're getting to that. So, as we go through this preview, <clears throat> But kudos to AJ Styles, man. Yep. He did an awesome job as well. I'm not going to say he didn't take away from him. I mean, he's AJ Styles. No, I, I mean, still want some of those phenomenal one gloves. Yeah, um, I'm going to... Everybody, they, they both did a great job. Like I said, it could be back to the night. I mean, those guys really sold out. Um, So... For that point on, Kevin Owens uh, defeats Chris Jericho to become the new United States champion. So, when best friends collide. Right. Um, Bailey uh, defeated uh, Charlotte, Nia Jax, and Sasha Banks uh, in the women's fatal four way elimination match. Now, this is huge. Because I didn't give Bailey any shot at winning this title, Keisha. None went I think to I did. I think I did. I think it was me that said she would retain. I might have not. But I know I wanted her to. Um, yeah, I did. I did want her to because I wanted her to have her WrestleMania moment. And I was excited when she did. Um, I actually enjoyed this match. Um way more than the others for the simple fact of I, I mean I'm not going to say like it was my match of the night but I enjoyed this match in in the greatest aspect of how the how the three smaller women of the match had got together and decided okay we got to take out Nia Jax because she's going to like completely destroy us if we don't like they knew from the beginning like if they didn't do something about Nia like it was going to be over so, I, I give him credit for that. Uh, this, the moment the moment in the match where Charlotte decided, hey, you know, all right, we did a good job. High five. Everybody, both Sasha and Bailey looking at her like, girl, you crazy. It was hilarious. But um, as grand as Sasha's entrance was, she was the second one eliminated. Um, but I think it was, I actually, as as much as I didn't want to see that happen, I actually understood it. Because um, if anything, if you're going to do anything, pin Charlotte and have your moment. And I think that's what it was for Bailey. It was, okay, I pin Charlotte, I retain my title, I have my moment. I am now a legitimate champion. Get out my face. You know? Yeah. Well, you know my that, theory. That was about what being it champ. was to me. Yeah. Well, you know my theory about being champ. I don't think you are legitimately ever champ unless you defend your title at WrestleMania or you retain or win your title at WrestleMania. Right. I mean. Exactly. Like, hey, Sasha wins the belt on Raw and all that. It ain't the same, man. I'm sorry. I feel it's like not. WrestleMania is a validation point of such. Um. So, but yeah, Bailey held on, man. I thought that was amazing. It was awesome. I was excited. I was dancing and stuff. Lance was looking at me like I was crazy, and he don't know I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger. Like I don't. I was like, I, you didn't know I was a hugger. You didn't get your life together. Like, I, I, I kind of did, though. Matter of fact, I thought you did like people touching you in general. Oh, my gosh. 
Oh my gosh, what? I love hugs. Seriously? Here we go. Okay. Here's the thing. I love hugs. I don't like hugs from everybody. Like, there's a difference. There, that is the difference. I like hugs. I love hugs. I don't like them from everybody. So, if I don't know you, like, I, I unless, unless, I allow you to. No, we're not. I'm not gonna hug you. Like for most points, I don't even want to shake to your hand at times because of general reasons. But like, that's I'm why people like, okay. think you don't like hugs. Like you don't even want to shake hands. Like you like, uh, nope. yeah, no, because. All right, so for people that don't know, I I ride the train to work. Okay, so like I roll with Mario. I've rolled with for years, and you see some of the most disgusting things happen. Like, not even disgusting, like, oh, my God, someone just threw up in front of me. Like, not that dis- level of disgusting, but, like, okay, when I'm at work sometimes, like, I see people cough into their hand. That is one of the most disgusting things you can do in front of me. Like, to sneeze or cough into your hand is nasty because you're touching stuff. Like, you're constantly going around touching stuff, and you just cough or sneeze directly into your hand. So, I get real skeptical of shaking people's hands because of, of that reason. Because I'm like, Ugh, what if they like cough or sneeze into their hand and then they shake it my eyes? Ooh, that's so disgusting. Like, mm-hmm. I get really freaked out about that kind of thing. I'm not even like a huge germaphobe. I just don't, it's stuff like that that really like makes me not want to. So, I rather, it's funny at times, I would rather hug someone instead of shake their hand because of that reason but I don't want to hug everybody because like I don't if I don't really know you or even like you like that I don't want to hug you like if anything I just want you to be on my face so that's probably why you didn't think I was a hugger I am a hugger I want one of those shirts too I need to buy me one but that's neither here nor there like that's all I'm saying right so people if you out there coughing in your hands just stop it like Cough into the proper way to cough in front of people is to bring your arm up and cough into it. Like it's, it's always say cough into your sleeve or cough into your shoulder. Like or um, if you're gonna sneeze, do the same thing. But do not cough or sneeze into your hand. That is disgusting. Like no one wants you to to cough or sneeze into your hand and then like touch them. Like that's just nasty. But I got way off course, so. Yeah, no, 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 no problems. We, we're going to dial it back. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we had a tag team match. Uh, that ladder yes, match. Yes, we did. Uh, where the, the good guys, uh, the club, were defending their belts against Sheamus and Cesaro and Enzo and Cass, got a surprise. Uh, I would give credit to the New Day. Because they came out, and they said there was a fourth team. Right. And I was like, oh, oh wow. And it was dressed in ring gear. All these right. things are subtle. So you thought New Day was adding themselves to the match. I did. And then when they said, who? They, st- they, they started walking, and Kofi took his hat off. I was like, all right. And then this happened. I'm just going to play the audio for you guys to hear in TV land. I guess y'all in TV land. And, uh, you know, we'll respond accordingly. Could possibly be. Okay, I, I, I remember I got a show to do. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm over here. I started rocking out too hard. The whole thing went crazy. No. And it's funny because I'm going crazy at the house on Sunday. And everybody's with me, right? Well, not everybody, but the two people who live with me. Uh, Lynn is 10. So she doesn't really get the hardy thing. Because, you know, they was yeah. in TNA for a lot of those years. Da, da. Uh, Nicole did, you know, like, being my age. She was one. She stopped watching wrestling, and you know, would to go to air. Yeah. So she didn't pick up attitude air. I feel like that. I am going nuts over here. You know who you needed there? Me, because <laughs> I lost it. I lost it. Like Lance was looking at me. Like, are you serious? Yes. Yes, Nick. I'm, yes, I am serious. I am dead serious. I was, I was losing it. All oh, I was losing. It. Right. Like I screamed. <laughs> like I lost it. Here's the thing. I've heard all the rumors. I even heard the rumor that this was going to happen. I've heard. Hey, do you know the ROH contract ends on April first? Like that was the last day for the hour wage contract. I April did not know that. April second was WrestleMania. Right. I mean, people was telling me this. Like it was, it was. This was like, and this thing was going around the internet. I mean, it was no real big secret. Uh, people said the WWE deal was done. People said they were still working on it. People said they might go debut on Raw. It was all this stuff, man. But who? I think it. I think it just kind of fell to the back of people's mind. But then it went down. And then, of course, Cole, hey, we're about to be broken. Right. Uh, people in the crowd was like, delete, delete, delete. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> the whole crowd was yelling to delete. And then it was just like. I was. I, it, it, this is how good it got. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what happens but because it, uh, it goes bad man it but, got real like all I can say is that was a surreal <laughs> moment like during I've had we halfway through the match and I was like does this feel this this does not feel real to me like is this not real to somebody like there were people on Twitter like no this doesn't feel real at all like this just is not happening right now I was to see. I hadn't heard the rumors. I didn't know of any of this. Like maybe I wasn't paying attention enough during the week or whatever. But all I know is I hadn't heard any of this. But I did read, uh, like maybe a couple of days ago, that the Hardys didn't even show up for the show until like later. Um, but they, of course, um. You know, people after a while, you know, when you when you show up in the locker room and people see that you're there, then it's like, oh shit, you know. So of course, you know, everybody backstage they kind of had they had an idea, they knew, and everybody else knew. But I didn't know. I was just completely oblivious to all of this, and I was way too excited. I lost it when I heard their music. I was done. Like, I was like, you know what? I don't even need to see anything else. I'm good. Like, <laughs> like that was it for me. Like, I was done after that. I was like, you know what? I'm finished. This is this, this is all I needed for tonight. I'm good. But, uh, that's neither here nor there. I mean, Keith, it's the Hardys. Like, are you serious? Like, the last thing you want to do is face the returning Hardys. A team you had never accounted for. A team that is crisp and is precise. And has been doing this for the better part of like the last 20 some odd years. Um, these are two kids who was wrestling in the WWE. You know Jeff was wrestling in the WWE when he was like 17. Yeah. Because he was doing the extra work and was getting signed up like he was 18 when he was really still in high school. Right. 
I can't imagine being on Raw and going back to high school. <laughs> right. Couldn't tell me shit. Nigga, I You're was like, yeah, just wrestling good. The Undertaker. What the hell you going to tell me? But <laughs> about doing some damn geometry. Okay. Like, Next. Like, no, okay. Uh, all right. Just tell the truth. Like, and, yeah, and they just paid me the $500? They just paid me five hundred dollars right. for this spot, bruh. Which I know that some of y'all five hundred dollars ain't a lot of money. Which most of y'all lied, but <laughs> in the late nineties, for a sixteen-year-old to have five hundred dollars for one day of work, it was like, shoot. Okay, exactly. All right, I digress. Right. Right. I, dig- I digress. So you got this team, and man, they gave you all the classic Hardy stuff. I thought the other guys looked good, but uh, Matt Jeff Hardy, are you new? Uh, Raw Tag Team Champions. Jeff hit an epic swan tie from on top of right. one of them tall, like 22 feet ladders. Keisha, I was like, ooh, that's scary. For a 39 year old, I'm telling you, uh, that was awesome. Yeah. Like he said it himself. He was like, I didn't know I could do this at 39. Just, honey, you can do whatever you put your mind to. I'm just saying. Mm. Like, I'm going to need, need Keith to get on board. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to really need for you, Keith, to start practicing. Because, like, I'm going to need you to hit a swan time this year. Just go ahead and just get a ladder. We'll throw some messages See, out for you. I would <laughs> like to plead age, but I think Jeff Hardy is a little older than me. Uh, Keith, here's the thing. That is the reason why I never got into pro wrestling. I swear to God, that is like the number one reason I never got into pro wrestling. Because you don't want to hit a swan sign off of a ladder? Like, come on, kid. I don't want to break my neck. I don't want to break my neck trying. Look, here's what you asked like now a lot of these wrestlers are kind of tidy like I'm, I'm bigger than most of the roster but back then I was smaller than I am now and there wasn't no cruiserweight opportunities or that like that right All Right. so Keish understand I would go by different places and see guys try out and see guys do things and I'm like so you just go okay but uh, you just think. that's funny. But I think I okay. So we've talked about this on the show before about taking chair shots and you know all that kind of stuff. Because personally, right. I ain't gonna lie. I rather you put me through a table than expect me to hit with a chair. But yeah. all I'm saying is, because you like, can gimmick the chair, the table. That that chair, even if you gimmick it, man, it's still still. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Uh, so uh, I don't want to take a chair shot to the face. Like I just no, I don't think I'm good on that. Like I don't like getting hit in the face. Period. So taking a chair shot to the face is just not going to happen. But you can throw me to a table. Like I'm perfectly fine with it. And I might sound crazy, but this is the truth. Like I think I'll be able to to sustain it more. I think I really will be able to pull off a a um, via being body slammed through a table more than I am a chair shot. Like, I just, I don't know, I can't do it. Like, I just can't do it. Yeah. Um, I'm not here for it. Um, so. And I'm not I jumping off no crazy swan shit. Time. I'm not doing the swan time. <laughs> not doing the swan time. And I'm not jumping off anything crazy. Like I said, that's what kept me out of pro wrestling. I was like, nope, uh uh-uh, not me. Fuck that. So, like, no, no shame, no shame elbows from the top rope. Yeah. You're not doing that. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I knew that's like that's the kind of crazy shit I would have to do back then, in like 1999. If I wanted to get into business, I would have to be the dude oh, yeah. that said yeah. like, "Yo, all right, I'm willing to flip off a car." You know what I mean? Like, no, <laughs> no. First of all, I can't flip. I couldn't flip then. I can't flip now. I would never. I mean, I was good when I was about eight, but after that, man, I could shit. I tried to do a backflip one time with Junior High, and I was whew, glad I didn't get up in the emergency room. I was say it is. I can see it now. Yeah. Okay, Keith. So tonight during the match, right? You're gonna um, we're gonna do a few jabs, and you're gonna Irish whip me, 
um, into the ropes. I'm gonna slide out. Then I need you to run from mid ring to the back rope, do a clear run to the other side, and jump over the top rope right onto me. Like <laughs> I can see you back there. Like no, <laughs> like I'm not jumping. I'm not jumping down the ring. Like that's not gonna happen. They're like, but you're going to dive into me? No, you didn't hear me. I'm not jumping out of the ring that way. Like, that's just not going to happen. Like, we're good on that. Like, because some of the stuff I see now, I can be, I honestly can sit there and be like, no. Like, these power bombs to the apron, you're not power bombing me into the apron. Like, that's just not, are you serious? Like, that's the end of the match for me. I'm good. Like, that's, no. Keisha's supposed to get up. Um, I'm not getting up. So, you can go mm. and count me out. I'm finna go to the back. My back mm. hurts. <laughs> like, I'm done. So. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. So, Ooh. enough about that. Okay. So, the Hardys are the Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, John Cena exciting. and Nikki Bella defeat the Miz and Maurice. Uh, we kind of knew that was happening, but then uh, John does something really pretty big after the match. He proposed to Nikki Bella. It was sweet. John I'm Cena not gonna lie though; it was just kind of like uh, turning in his player card. Why was I not so? I was excited about it, but like I wasn't like I was. I was. I was excited about it. But it wasn't like an over the top moment for me, I guess. You don't watch Total Divas, so you don't remember John telling her, I ain't going to bury you. Yeah, no. I no, oh, no, no. Well, he didn't say it like that, but he said it was like he no, was no, 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 no. thinking about getting married. Because that was the first season. That was the first season. I watched that. He pretty much looked her in the face and was like, I don't plan on getting married again. Like he was just like I've I've thought about it, and I just definitely am just not getting married again, and I'm definitely not having kids. Like he was just in there like no, like there's no pretty much saying there's no place in my life for marriage or kids. Like it's just not gonna happen. So Nikki was going through this process of like, do I stay with him? Do I not stay with him? Like. Do I even even why even try this if you can't compromise or you can't I can't get what I want from you or whatever it was yeah I I trust me I got past all of that it was deep it was deep cause he looked her in the face and told her that like it's that has to be like heartbreaking someone looking you in the face and being like yeah I'll never marry you like it was it was awful. It was awful. And I mean, no, he didn't say it like that, but that's pretty much what he said. Like, it was just kind of like, yeah. We're paraphrasing, but at the same time, it, it was the same thing. It was, to me, it's the same thing. If you're sitting there telling me, like, you don't ever plan to get married again, you just told me you'll never marry me. Like, that's, that's pretty much it. So, but that changed. And not only that, it was changed with a huge rock. Because that thing, it just, Oh God, that thing blinded me. I was like, "Shit, Judge Brock is huge." You know, Cena has, but then again, that's that's classic Cena style. Got to go all out. Cause if you don't, I mean, if he didn't, I would think so less of him. Like it was, mm. he went all out with that one. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the ring was fucking monstrous, Keith. Yeah, it was huge. fucking monsters. But I mean, he was John Cena. Like, you say that, do you think like, yeah? But he is John Cena. I mean, shit. Right, it, right, <laughs> exactly. I think that's something that you have to remember at right there at that moment. Like, well, he is some John Cena. So there you go. Yeah. But I mean, happened. once I seen his, once I seen his Florida house on Total Divas, that that was it for me. I was like, oh yeah. <clears throat> mm, mm-mm. Like, so. who the hell got an indoor waterfall? Not too many people, Keith. Not too many people. Like, like, <laughs> like, like seriously. Like, with rocks in a mountain and everything. Like, exactly. Nigga, I don't know. Am I inside or outside? Okay. 
Anyway. <laughs> Back to the scheduled program. Seth Rollins defeats Triple H in the unsanctioned match. Uh, the highlight of this match was uh, once Stephanie McMahon went through a table. Yeah, that was. Inadvertently. Inadvertently. Uh, I, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go a, little back, a little further back into it. Before the match, Triple H and Stephanie's interest was great. I'm sorry. I have to point that out. Them coming down there on that motorcycle, man, that was awesome. Yeah. Like, that was greatness. I no. felt like that that entrance was them. Like, no, I mean, he rivals Undertaker for WrestleMania entrances, right? Yeah. No, yeah, I think does. Taker has the more majestic pageantry feel to his. But Triple H, man, you don't know what he going to do, man. What type he exactly. had Exactly. He had the uh, Metallica crank it and uh, had him there and then flipped back to his, you know, uh, what's the name of the group? Um, so Ace of Spades, Motorhead. Man, I was drawing a blank. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was thinking about Libby and all that. And I just, I just drawing a blank. Okay, the Terminator interest that he did a couple of years ago. Golden Ghost. So he, he does greatness with these. And I had it's funny because I actually looked through a few more of them um, when after I said I was. I was, I was, and it's it's crazy because uh, one that ramp that WrestleMania ramp already. I know I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but that WrestleMania ramp was long as hell. Like, oh, it was ridiculous. Like, I was like, why is it so long? Jesus! But um, other than Sasha Banks. Uh, he was the only other person that didn't walk the actual entire ramp. And I was like, well, he's Triple H. Him and Stephanie ain't going to walk that ramp. Like, I already knew that wasn't going to happen. But, but for them to have the police escort and then, like, come down on them, that was, it was awesome. Okay. So there was that. But <clears throat> all in all, this was a, it was an awesome match. Of course, Stephanie being Stephanie, getting involved and all of that how she ended up going through that table and I was like I was excited about that I was like yes thank you Jesus and then Lance was looking at me like are you serious like are you really cheering on her going through the table I was like listen (laughs) listen has she not been on that apron getting involved doing too much she would never went through the table so they ain't got nothing to do with me Um, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know. But I think for me, and I'm going to put this out there because I don't know if anybody else would, but I think for me is for me to watch Triple H get pinned after being hit with his own finisher was the highlight of WrestleMania for me. It was one of them. I'm not saying it was the main one. I ain't saying it's number one. It's my only. But that was definitely one highlight for me, was him actually getting pinned and losing to his own finisher. Now, that is greatness. And I know people are like, well, there's seven lines of finisher, too. No, 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 no. The pedigree is Triple H's finisher, okay? So, I mean, I don't care who else who else uses it, what else, you know, nah. That has Triple H's name written all over it. So for Seth Rollins to hit him with and then pin him for the three count, I mean, how much better can you get than that? I was excited. I was like, yeah, yeah, go Seth. But I ain't going to lie, I was kind of, I was hurting for him because I know that knee had to be killing him. Yeah. Um, For better or for worse, sometimes you catch some heat that you weren't ready for. But uh, mm-hmm. end of the day, Rollins win. Uh, what Randall Keith Orton uh, wins the WWE title for Bray Wyatt? Uh, Keith, what did you have to think about Bray putting those images in the ring and all that stuff? And I was 
saw this. Do you not know? I started freaking out because, like, my skin was crawling. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I didn't want to see that. So I know if I didn't want to see it, like, I had to only imagine, like, everybody else's reaction when they saw it. Like, it was, oh, I was like, I don't even want to think about that. I'm going to start talking about it. Because if I started, if I continue to talk about it, I'm going to think about it. And I don't want to think about that. That was disgusting. But as we've seen, it didn't work. So it was really nothing to really, you know, fray about. But um, I definitely, I understood it, though. Um, to me, that was a classic Bray Wyatt move. And it was a awesome thing to see. Um I definitely understood it. I just, I was just kind of like, nah, I need y'all to stop that. So, um, but it didn't affect Randy at all. It, he he, he kind of just shook up. Randy's entrance to the ring was awesome with the, uh, with the Viper. Uh, rolling the him walking and then walking it down it, him, it rolling down to the ring with him that was greatness but it was funny because all of that to me was symbolic in itself uh, the little images that Bray had coming up in the ring of course was definitely uh, a classic move for him I just, I don't know, man. I was just kind of like freaked out a little bit. I was like, ugh, ugh. Because I already don't like bugs. Um, I don't like bugs, like, to the point where I don't want to be near that kind of stuff. Like, the stuff that was showing up in that ring, like, if it, if it was, like, crawling on me, I, like, I'll lose it. Like, no. So... Even looking at it, it was just like, nah, that's not how it works. But yeah. I digress. Okay. Um, so. But Randy wins the title. Um, I don't know if Randy was supposed to be the baby face or not. Does that make sense? He became it. Um, I mean, this is, it's been weird over a week. Yeah. Um, Brock Lesnar uh, defeated Goldberg to win the Universal Championship for Raw. And I was asked, hey, man, uh, Goldberg was spirit the hell out of Lesnar. Is that all he know how to do? Yes. Pretty much. Uh, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so, so. Um, that's kind of what it was. Like, these two dudes basically ran a match against each other where each one only used two moves and they made it work. Right, but, but that's um, why I'm so short. Yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, Brock is the new champ, and he learned more money, more problems. Uh, Naomi, who made her return to SmackDown this, the week, be- I mean the very show before WrestleMania, uh, wins the women's title in her hometown, uh, defeating Natty, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, Becky Lynch, and Mickey James. Hey, man, um. She, do you know she's right now she's trying to figure out a name for that submission hold she used on Alexa Bliss like I don't know what that is but I want to learn how to do it <laughs> you a I do <laughs> I don't know what that is but I want to learn how to do it like, I don't know I'm necessarily using on anyone you know I just want to learn how to do it it's nice to know stuff like that. Right. Defense reasons. Defense reasons. That's all I'm saying. You know. I I, I I don't need to do all that, but, you know, it'd be nice to know. So if somebody can teach me that submission whole right, I'd be thoroughly grateful. I, <laughs> I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. But she don't have a name for it yet. She had a name for it. I think there was a name... Uh, because I was, of course, I follow her on Twitter. So 
I think there was a name for it when she was a heel. But of course, you know, with her being a face, she she wanted to change it. So um, she doesn't have an official name for that move just yet. But uh, I think they'll come up with some nice. Um, she has a. Uh, she hasn't uh, renamed it yet, so. But I was, I was excited to see her do it. Like I was like, yes, like. Um. So, that was it. Of course, you know, I lost it when she won the uh, when she won the women's title, because it was WrestleMania. Like, for real, for real, she won it in a six pack challenge. So of course I was excited, and she was on home time too. Over with, like. Uh, that was that was my highlight of the night, you know, like number one. Um, it wasn't the only one, but it was definitely number one. So there's that. But I thought they had cut the match, like no BS. Um, I was one of those people that thought they cut the match because it was eleven o'clock. At this point, it's way past eleven, and they still had like three or four matches to go and I was like they possibly they're not going to do all of these like that's I'm, I'm really guessing that's not to happen so um but at the same time it did so at that point I was like okay uh I was like well thank God that they actually had this match because if anybody knows like I know like we've seen at past WrestleMania, they'll cut a women's match in a second. They'll do that in a heartbeat. But I think because this was the first time that the SmackDown Women's Championship was being defended at WrestleMania, they weren't going to cut it. They weren't going to even think about cutting it because then not only because then you're cutting history being made, and of course you don't want to do that at WrestleMania. Like, no. It's one thing if it was just the uh, six is like it was like a, a six woman tag team match or you know something like that they probably would have just cut it and been done with it but this was for the Smackdown Women's title and it was a six pack challenge so now they were going to cut it but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking about that and we're going to get to the very to the main event the main event of the evening which I don't know if I can really get into it. Like, Keith, I don't know if I can do this part. Like, seriously. I I really just don't know. It's, it's, it's going to be hard. It's definitely going to be hard. I know if it's going to be hard for me, it's definitely going to be hard for him. Because, this is like, if you are a wrestling fan, then you understand the magnitude of Undertaker at WrestleMania. Like, you get it. You know what I'm saying? So, this last match was definitely one for everybody to anticipate. Now, Roman Reigns as his opponent wasn't favorable for most, but well, it was understandable. Here's the thing. It was a it's a huge spot. Um Right. We're main event WrestleMania. We're deep. Cause when when the show starts turning, right? And you watch how the matches fall, you're like, Wow, they went title, did they win title? Hey man, the last two matches left is the women's title and oh shit, Roman and Taker. Yeah. And then it hits that it's going to be the main event. Uh, right. I thought people were drained by the time that match came. Uh, as we talked about earlier, that long ass show. Exactly. Four, four to 11 is four hours. Right. We, geez, we was deep. We was way past that early. Yeah. So the match rolls like eleven forty something. I mean, it rolls to like twelve seventeen to twelve sixty. 
I put on Twitter like, do we all realize what time it is? Like, yeah. people was exhausted. And I, I don't think that did them any favors with the crowd. Because I can imagine being in the crowd being there like, oh, wow. Uh, but as a whole viewer, I was just like, this is the way they fucking up hard. Uh, yeah. But they get to interview with Roman. He talks about life and, you know, they say, doesn't hold back. But uh, a lot of people was wondering what we were going to talk about with this. I would say it like this, Keish. Um I've had time to look at it and talk to people and learn some things. Taker had to sign off on this. You, you know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I do. I mean, because he could, at his career and his stature and all that, he could easily say, "Man, I ain't losing. I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about." Right. He didn't do it. He went out there and he did the honors for the next young up and cover. At least they think. Like they're committed. The company's committed. Do you realize this is the third WrestleMania role where Roman Reigns has been in the main event? Yeah. Yeah, because he's do. he's in the main event against Brock, Tim and Triple H, fight for the title last year, and then now we're here. So third straight year, in the main event at WrestleMania is like near Hall of Famer stat stuff, right? So, understand it's it's gonna be a crazy thing here. Um, I thought though, like the. The retirement when it started happening, Keish, it threw me so hard. Yeah. Because for those of you who don't know, Taker retired at WrestleMania. I mean, he put his gloves and his hat and all that stuff down in the ring. And it just was, it was a sad experience. Um, one thing that really added element to the match, and I really liked that Jim Ross came back for this match. Right. Um, you know. I think he's taken may have requested him, so probably did. Uh, um I check. Uh, I was excited though. Um, I was excited but that moment right there, uh, yeah, I was I was almost in tears. Yeah. Like real tears. Like I was I was gonna cry real tears. And it was crazy because like Lance was looking at me like Are you gonna cry? I was like, I am really trying not to right now. Yeah. So you're gonna have to give me a minute. Like it was deep. That moment was just they'll take you away. Like the crowd chanting thank you, Taker and I mean it got real deep. Like yeah. really fast. So Yeah, um I mean I'm working on an article for Ringtime Pro Wrestling, uh dot com. And it is dealing with the Undertaker's career. Uh, Keish, not the easiest thing to write. Nah, it can't be. And then it's like trying to make sure you don't overload with information. Right. So crazy, man. But I think this is probably the greatest superstar of all time. Um, I was at work and one of the guys, you know, different guys talk about wrestling. And then on Sunday, you know, people worked there, they was there, they was watching it, and then some people went into it. And then when he retired, he was, he was sad. And one girl, she said, uh, man, I mean, he, he, Jeff was so sad. He was sad, like, Denzel watched him retire. I'm going to tell you this. The Undertaker, just talk about being rare or who you are at your job. It is rare and harder to find an Undertaker than it is to find a Denzel Washington. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. As great as he is, I mean, there are other great actors that are. There's, the Undertaker is the answer for almost all your wrestling questions. Right. Who did that? It was probably the Undertaker. Yeah. So there's okay. So I'm gonna tell y'all how it really got for me. 
there's a there was and I say was because I mean was there was a guy on my Facebook that had made a he wrote a status and he made comments and I deleted him and I blocked him and this is why because that status read um, people are really upset about the Undertaker like quote unquote retired he was like wrestling is fake so y'all being upset about his quote unquote career is ridiculous and something like that and I was like yep I can't be cool with you you're a shithead and I deleted him and I blocked him like I don't have time for stuff like that I don't need that kind of negativity in my life even if it is on my Facebook like I'm just not even dealing with it. so um I don't, I, to me, there is no comparison. Like, if you don't watch, if you are not, like, even the occasional wrestling fan, then, like, your opinion about what The Undertaker means to anybody is completely invalid. Like, just get out of my face. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, but still. Like, your opinion is completely invalid. I don't even want to talk to you about it. Like, seriously. Um, even if you can't watch it a little bit. I know I know people that were wrestling fans once once upon a time in life that can if I told them Undertaker retired, like they'll look me in the face and be like, Are you serious? Like that did when did that happen? Are you for real? Like, is he really done? Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, I can talk to them. I can't talk to someone that says stuff like that because you are not a wrestling fan. You just, I'm like, you know, and it's crazy to me that people say stuff like that because I'm sitting here like, but you probably watch reality TV shows and watch fucking Law and Order SVU every night or some shit. Like, come on, mm-hmm. man. Uh, you know, I, I don't have time for that. Speaking of uh, Raw uh, and, you know, what happens after or whatever, Chrisley Snow's best helped head a show. Uh, if you're not familiar with Ty Chrisley, I don't want to go all into that, but the chant started before the show, right? Right. I got Thank You Taker. Then I got Roman Sucks. Yeah. Then I just got Boo. Did right. it was to fuck you, Roman? Yeah, I was like oh, this. I was getting scared. I was like, the FCC go cut us off. <laughs> they did. They did. They just let it happen. And it's funny because then it started chanting the lead. I was like, are you serious? Like it got deep. Keith, I did something that I know I, I regularly don't really do. But there's moments, moments like this rarely happen. So I I was watching Raw. Um, I was watching a replay. And um, I rewinded it back from after they showed, like, the video from WrestleMania and everything. And they actually got into the arena and showed the chance. This was going on, like, before Roman even came out. Thank you, Taker, was going on for like three minutes. And then he came out, and the rest of this lasted for like another like three to four minutes before he even said anything. Like, he was out there for for a, a good few minutes before he even got to even think about getting the word in. They yeah. just destroyed him. The crowd destroyed him in that ring. Well, you know what? Like, I thought he held it together re- remarkably. Held it together. He did. He did. Uh, and he he dropped the mic. He did the big hey man. My quad steal the stuff. <laughs> right. And just left. But um. So. But, but he didn't need to do anything else. No, he didn't do it. That was that, that was, was a very he, powerful promo. Him just doing that, and I think we're off and running with the idea of like, you know, 
reigns against whoever. Um, but I think he's right. going to try to naturally transition to the heel spot without like declarating, I'm a heel, or smack somebody in the face with a chair to become a heel. He's not going to do that. Um, Vince, uh, well, Stephanie's out because she's injured. She fired uh, good old Tay Law. So we'll do a super field trip to uh, Walmart. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, good old Vince comes out because because of Stephanie going through that table, and it was funny because the crowd they were cheering, and he was like, "She was gonna be out for a while." Yeah, she was almost broken in half. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Like you, like you guys would be inconsiderate. Everybody start cheering, and then he was like, "Y'all just be a downright rude." I mean, then they they went crazy. Y'all just y'all bloodthirsty. They just went nuts. I have to honestly say that I loved that raw crowd. They were amazing. Like that's the kind of crowd I want to be in if I'm going to be in a crowd. Like I want to be in that kind of crowd. Because they were laughing and enjoying the fact that Stephanie went through that tape. But, I mean, how can you not? It was awesome. So, Vince gets out there and he not only announces that, but then he's like, oh, well, we need a new general manager. Because Mick Foley was fired and, uh, Stephanie's out for right now, so they were like, "We need somebody to run to run Raw." So then out, and he was like, and he was a he was a inducted into the Hall of Fame last night, and then here comes Teddy Long dancing onto the stage, and he was just looking at Teddy like, "No, Teddy, it's not you." <laughs> Teddy was like, "Man, what?" Oh, my bad. Walks off. Funniest, funny one of the funniest parts of Raw, hands down. But Needless to say, new uh, Raw General Manager is none other than the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. Did I get excited? Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? But, uh, I kind of, I didn't, to tell the truth, that kind of hit me left field. I wasn't really expecting that. So, that, that, that was something for me there that I just, I, I didn't know that was going to happen, but at the same time, hey, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I am not upset about it. Right. Um, Kurt, Kurt Angle as the new general manager? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, the Revival made their debut on Raw, which I thought was cool. Uh, sure, uh, show off that graphic design skills. Uh, Uh, Finn Baylor made his TV return because you know he's been wrestling dark matches, you know, on the road, getting ready. Right. Mm-hmm. He made his TV return on uh, Raw. Uh, I mean, I thought all in all, Raw was a very solid show. Uh, SmackDown followed suit. Uh, AJ Styles and Shade had a mutual respect moment. Uh, I thought now, who? You talk about who had the debuts. I, apparently, they yeah. got all the good NXT call ups, right? First of all, Ty Dillinger, right. who, yes. hey man, yes. he won a match on, on, on SmackDown. I right. said, all right. Right. He called him up. He started winning matches. Um, <laughs> so stupid. You ain't got no sense. I swear you don't. But the big one. <laughs> But yeah, that was I was excited about that. Uh, should say oh. Nakamura is coming to her because after like the Miz and Maurice did the see the Nikki Bella segment, which I thought was hilarious. Like I thought it was awful. Amen. I was like, oh my god, they're annoying. Miz is funny man. when he started doing it. I'm John Cena. House rule two forty four. Do not talk to me. <laughs> 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 Shit. 
<laughs> but John Cena wants to be romantic for a moment. Nikki, I love you. Like, I was like, really? Hey, man. That, like, oh, that's so this. funny. Now that's what our tucker gets get get cloud about. Yo, hey man, you probably bought she probably bought that ring, did she? <laughs> oh shit. That was awful. But Nothing you could do about it. Yeah, pretty much. But nonetheless, um uh she's uh oh, Nakamura's uh debut, of course, was classic. So uh, what is that violinist name? What is his name? Is it like I want to say it's Lee Daniels? Is that him? No, that's Hold that's on. the Butler. Uh, okay, I'm gonna say it's Robert England, but, but I want to make sure. I Hold on. Uh, eh, eh, eh. No, that's that, that's Freddy Krueger. Uh, oh my god. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh-huh. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, the, the easiest way I know. What is his? What is his name? See, I, that's the thing. Lee I, England. I need to know. Lee England Jr. See, I knew his first name was Lee. See. I was like, yeah, you know, that's Lee Daniels. That's the Butler. Okay, and I was, I knew, I knew England because I was like, yeah, well, I went too far off. Yeah, the first England, <laughs> the first England I went with so, Robert England because I'm a hundred, and that's the dude who played Freddy Krueger. Um, so, so we both were right when we weren't right. Like, yeah, you had his last name and I had his the first, first day. Needed to put them together. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, he's awesome. So. <laughs> and I, you know, I always get thoroughly excited because he's a black man playing the violin. So, right. I mean, seriously, like, because like when he started off. playing, at first I kind of didn't catch it. I was like, uh, all How right, so he's, not? I was like, he's about to play a Cena song. Okay, uh, then it was like because I, I expected Cena to come out, but then I realized, hey, no, C- no, he's, he, he's not, he's not coming out. He's not, uh, he's not going to show up for a while, right? Like this is right. the thing, you're not gonna see him or Nikki for a long time. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 kind of a thing. But, but it, it start, I start I start really catching the riffs. I was like, yo, I know who coming. Then I was thinking in my head too, like, yo, Biz do, did not sign up for this. Biz right. did not sign up for this. Get out of here. Abort. Abort. You did not sign up for this. <laughs> Nobody. You know how Daniel be talking about how he, he's like, yo, Biz wrestles safe and Biz wrestles like a puck. Hey. Yeah, that's, that That don't need to be the person he wrestles. Right. Mm-mm. 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 Them yeah. kicks be coming too fast and hard. Uh-uh. You don't, you don't want to go down that road. Yeah. You see what happened to um, Austin Aries' eye. Like, you, you just... You, then you don't really want to. No, you might not want to go nowhere near that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy to me because I knew who it was as soon as I seen Lee Eagle. When yeah. I seen him standing there with that violin, because I thought back to when we first seen him, and he, uh, when he first, when he first did an entrance for Macklemore, I was like, I, I got excited instantly. I was already screaming. And dude hadn't even came out yet. Like, he hadn't even started playing his theme yet. Like, I was already into it. So, uh, when he finally did come out, I was like, yeah! My banded over here looking at me crazy. I'm like, what are you yelling about? I'm like, huh? I'm good. But I wasn't good. I was too excited. I couldn't contain it. Like, I was already through. Like it was awesome. Um, and to tell the truth, I because there's been this argument of shouldn't he have went to Raw? No, hmm. no, no. He's exactly where he needs to be. Like I'm not saying that there should have been. A, I didn't have a preference of where he was, where he was, where he should go. Um. 
as far as him getting called up to the main roster. I didn't have a preference, but him being on SmackDown works. It fits. So I definitely am excited about this entire situation. And he didn't have to say a word. He got in that ring, that, uh, the violin stopped playing and everything. And then um, he uh, he took a bow, and that was it. Mm. He didn't have to say a word, and that's exactly how it should have been. So, um, I, I'm, I'm really scared for Naomi and her knee right now. I am hoping that she hadn't re-injured it like to the point where she's going to have to drop the title again because that's going to suck. Um, not only that, but Baron Corbin is now our new Intercontinental Champion. So, that was definitely an exciting part of SmackDown. Yeah, um... Uh, all in all, I thought we, we had a very good week. I thought we really figured out where we're going after WrestleMania. And uh, with that being said, Keish, any parting shots, anything to get out? Um, I want everybody to know that we appreciate y'all listening to us. And we love y'all. And if you didn't watch WrestleMania, you need to go back and watch it because it was an awesome show. And you need to watch the Raw and SmackDown after the fact. And two or five live in NXT just because I'm just saying, like, for one avid resident plan to everybody else out there in the world, like, I'm telling you, it's worth it. You will. Now, here's the thing about watching WrestleMania. You gonna watch WrestleMania? Watch WrestleMania. Do not watch the kickoff show. It is not necessary unless you want to watch the three matches that was on there. Um, get onto the network. You can fast forward through all the other extra stuff. And you can just watch that stuff. But I'm telling you right now, they need to never have a ramp that damn long at WrestleMania ever again. That ramp was ridiculous. And I wasn't even there. But I'm just saying. So, but uh, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. And we definitely am glad that y'all listen to us. Even if you listen to us, once every two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. It don't matter. Because we're just glad you're here. So, I think this is me. Um, y'all have a great and wonderful weekend. And mm. you know we're going to see you next week. Yep. Uh, we start off a new year. There will be a superstar shakeup. We will be giving you a full oh, yeah. breakdown. Yeah. A superstar shakeup. What that will mean for the careers of the stars who get moved. Uh, is it a good or bad thing for them getting moved? So all of that will be into next week's show. Uh, like he said, well, thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for being down, and uh, we will be back next week. Peace. Bye.